What's up, guys? We're back with more Microsoft Flight Simulator, and today we're continuing our Freight Dog series. Uh, this time it's going to be UPS Flight 1365 from Pensacola to Albany. It is a really quick, short hop. A good example of what you can do in a, uh, a heavy cargo aircraft where uh, you take these short flights in a heavy airplane and you don't have to fly for like hours and hours on end, right? Like this is like a 30 or 40 minute flight uh, up to 19,000 feet, then right back down. So should be a good one once again we're on vats and we're going to give it a try today it is actually working so let's go ahead and hop in the airplane and uh we'll get everything up and running the first thing we're going to do is uh, go to the uh, efb over here and import our flight plan from sim brief there we go uh the weather is a little bit messy here in pensacola this morning as ifr it said uh, winds 280 10 knots gusting to 20 knots 10 statue miles broken at 900 feet uh, Albany is going to be uh, 26011 gusting to 20, 10 statue miles broken at 2500, overcast at 3600. So a little bit messy here in the southeast today. Uh, we've got this loaded up. This looks pretty good. We're going direct to, uh, I don't know what this waypoint is, guys. It's INBRD. Is that inboard or is it inbred? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of think it might be inboard, but uh, we're going to call it inbred. Uh, and then we go direct to Dared and then direct to uh, Albany. So uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Let's go to uh, Weights and Balances. Let's load our airplane up. Update from Sim Brief and apply load. We're hauling 99,000 pounds today. Probably a little bit heavy for this hop. I wouldn't think they would have a whole lot on there, but um, you never know, right? You never know. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get everything going on airplane here. Let's get to battery one, two, and three. Those are good. External power is available. We'll get the ground power going. We'll get uh, nav lights to one. We'll get uh, no smoking on. And uh, we'll do the uh, flight recorder ground control. That is good. And now we'll line our IRS. One, two, and three. Get these oxygen lights over here while we're at it. And we'll arm the uh, emergency lights. All right. I think that's all good for now. Uh, we can go ahead and get window heat too, just in case. And galley power. Uh, we're going through some of the things, right? Like, I'm not a stickler for all of it. We don't do the APU, APU fire test and the engine fire test and all that stuff. All right, that's uh, good. Let's go ahead and clear you out. And we need to align our IRS. So we're going to go ahead and get our flight plan loaded in. We're going to go to menu, and then A cars, and sim brief. And it should import, there we go, uh, Pensacola to Albany. We're going to be flying it to flight level 190, cost index 60. UPS got lots of money today. We're going to do 60 on that thing. All right, 60, and it's going to be UPS. Actually, let's go ahead and start this aligning. There we go. All right, UPS 1360, or 1365. 1365. I flew 1366 last night. That one goes from actually from Louisville the Birmingham and then from Birmingham to Pensacola and then I think it's 1365 from Pensacola to Albany and then Albany back to, to Louisville so they kind of fly like a loop but there's like I think one uh, one of the flights that can go from like Albany to to um, um, Orlando or something like there's different variations of it but this is one of them all right we'll get him plugged in let's do our next in it page is going to be 26.3 on fuel. 26.3. Zero fuel. 277.3. 277. Oh, come on. It doesn't want to select. There we go. Point trace. Nice. And CG is going to be 30.7. We're going to round it up. 30 points seven all right nice and we did get a auto message from bat sim it says our uh, our squawk is going to be 3466 so we'll get that put in real quick 34 66 all right here we go yeah uh, we got a little bit of scrolling to do here and there goes 66 nice all right let's raise you up let's go ahead and clear you out 
Uh, we'll look at our flight plan real fast. Not much to this, right? There's not a SID. There's not a star. It's pretty much just take off, head direct to a fix, uh, to inbred, and then head to a uh, dared, and then we'll do... We're probably going to do the RNAV into uh, the RNAV approach. I can't think of the runway for um, Albany. We have pulled up here in just a second. Let's do airports. Aeropuerto. Parking info. All right, let's do Albany. Nice. And the arrival. Actually, no arrival. It's going to be an approach. <laughs> RNAV runway two, three. That is going to be us. All right. I think that all should be good. Let's go ahead and do our performance uh, calculations here. We're going to be taking off rowing runway two, six. There you go. Nice. It looks like there is dry conditions. I don't see any rain. It just looks like it's uh, overcast and windy, right? So we'll sync you up 280 at 10 knots. Uh, 1515 takeoff. Uh, air conditioners will be on. Anti ice. No, we don't need it. Uh, force tow. Okay, we're good with all that. Flex is going to be 43. It's going to be 141, 141, 145. Considerably lower than our Aero Union flight, right? Aero Union, man, 168 V2. That's the highest I think I've seen in this airplane, but it's because of uh, that uh, high altitude uh, takeoff that we did, right? Let's go ahead and get the APU going. Oh, never mind. We got to do fuel pumps. Fuel pumps. There's one particular pump. I think it's this one right here that you need to do if you just want to run the APU, but I'm not certain on that. I need to look at that. All right, let's start it up. It should be coming up. Everything else looks good. So our V speeds are going to be... Let's brighten this up some. Come on. Are you going to do it? There we go. A little bit finicky there, right? All right, 141, 141. Go to take off approach. 141. Now we got it. 141. 141 and I think it said 145 okay so 145 upstairs or up above I should say not upstairs upstairs to me is the uh, overhead right 145 nice all right and then 222 plus 20 is gonna be 242 get that in really quick all right 242 and we're going to climb to 5000 there's not a star so there's not like an initial climb on this uh, runway heading that's a good question I don't know let's go ahead and do flex so flex is going to be 43 before we forget about it There we go. Nice. All right. Let's set uh, altimeters are set. Let's uncage you and the landing elevation. I don't know that either. We need to go to our charts. Let's see. Pinned and Pensacola is going to be runway heading is 260. Runway heading to 260 and landing elevation for Albany is where's it at uh, 196 so we'll put in 200 crazy it's just a little bit less than uh louisville louisville's like 500 feet i think so just a hair less all right i think that all looks good right i think so uh let's go ahead and get strobes to auto let's go ahead and get beacon on because we're getting ready to push back uh seat belt signs we'll get them going and i think I think everything else is good. We're going to hold off on the probes for now. Let's get APU bleed on. Nice. Let's kill the external power. Let's go over here to our ground equipment. We'll get rid of that. So we got to get uh, left stairs off ground power units and toggle the chocks. And now we got to get the door closed and we'll get those armed. Doors in transit. Nice door is closed. All right, arm all doors. All doors are armed. 
And what else do we have? I think we're good on everything else. Let's go to Transponder and let's take a look at Simulware. Make sure we don't have any ATC. I don't see anyone. We do have traffic, uh, VFR traffic, or it looks like a little civil aviation uh, from Gulfport to, I don't know where he's going to. He's going down the coast. Uh, someone's in a CRJ going from Jacksonville to Houston, so that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and set this as well. Let's go negative five. Negative five, uh, this is part of the process. I couldn't tell you why. I think it has something to do with the GPWS, but it's absolutely, you have to set it to negative five on A300. Um, I think we're good, right? I think we're good. All right, we'll see about pushing back here. Let's kind of get an idea of where we need to go. Ooh, tight spot, right? Tight fit. <laughs> it's a tight fit. Uh, we need to go. I guess we'll go to the uh, to the right. Go ahead and push back, and like immediately to the right, right? Yeah, man, we're gonna have to Austin power this thing, right? And yeah, <laughs> it's like really squeezed in here. This is a, the uh, legit cargo ramp, but. They don't park like that. Like if you look at it in Google Earth, they kind of, they park like this way. They don't park in there, you know, like it doesn't make sense, but uh, I think that's good. Let's stop, 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 stop. Control P for our, we didn't even get to start our engine up because like <laughs> it was such a tight fit. Oops, let's go to ignition B and let's start some number dose. Numero dose, Intu's coming up. She's looking mighty fine, right? What a good looking airplane. Man, I love this plane. I really just do. If you guys didn't know, we're gonna get into the PMG DG737. Like there's some uh, Aero Mexico flights that I've been wanting to fly in that plane. So we're gonna get into it. I just gotta get type rated in that airplane. Like I'm not qualified to fly it yet. Like I, I kinda know a little bit, I can fly it, but um, I just need to be more familiar with it, right? It's the same thing, whether it's Microsoft or DCS or whatever, like I have to get type rated in the A300, the 737, the F16, the F18, the A10, like you name it. We've done it. All right, we'll let her finish coming on up. So watch uh, Simulware, make sure everything's looking kosher over here. It looks good. All right, so it's stable at 63%. Let's go ahead and do numero uno. <coughs> if she comes on up. Yeah, we need to hurry up and get out of here. Spurs kind of limited time this morning, so we got to go, right? Like, we got to go and get this over with. All right, we're looking for 23% into, there you go, 23%. I've done it lower. I've done it lower. I don't think it makes that much of a difference, honestly, in the plane, but like they say, you're supposed to do it at 23, so that's what we do, right? All right, so we're climbing out to uh, 5,000 feet on runway heading. Our speed's gonna be 242 knots. Let's go ahead and select, heading select. And we're going to start out with level change and then we'll go to profile mode. Go ahead and get our probe heat going. Stable at 63%. Let's arm the spoilers and let's get those down. Uh, I think everything else is good. We'll do runway turnoff. It's daytime, right? But it's just extra lights on the airplane to kind of make people aware, right? That we're doing our thing. All right, I think everything is looking good. Let's go ahead and do our uh, takeoff configure test. Looks good. Man, that is such a good thing. I love that test. It is save spur. Many times, many times. All right, let's go ahead and release parking brake. Hop back in the airplane. Let's roll off. Uh, we're monitoring on the second radio. I don't want to do that because it does a wicked echo, right? 
Pensacola traffic, UPS 1365, heavy taxi into runway 26 for departure, Pensacola. All right, there we go. We made our little uh, Unicom call there, even though they're going to CTAF especially. I don't know if that's like put into effect now. Or if they're going to do that or what. I'm really, I'm not 100% certain on that, but um, we'll do Unicom for now. There's, there's no one down here to worry about. It doesn't look like, where's this dude going? Yeah, no, he's not a problem either. Okay, yeah, no one here looks like they're going to be a problem. Oh, there is someone inbound Pensacola. Yeah, Southwest flight. <coughs> Southwest is inbound. He's over. Uh, he's over Mississippi right now. He's a little. He's a little bit out, right? We should be able to uh, bust up out of here before he rolls in. At least I hope so. Surely. He's through, uh, he's a, yeah, he's still at cruising altitude. He's at 39,000 feet, so he hasn't even started his descent yet. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the last video. Had someone leave a comment and said they, uh, they were glad to see some Aero Union Ops as far as a uh, flight sim video yeah that that one aero union is an outlier right like back in the day they were a lot bigger they did a lot more they're kind of like it seems like they're kind of winding down i don't know much about the company but uh they had a way bigger fleet back in the day and they flew to a lot more destinations so now like i said they only have like three aircraft i guess that are flying and a bunch in storage but um good looking airplane really and another freight dog and when i say freight dog though that is like a term that uh Cargo pilots kind of lovingly used because they go all around the globe, you know, hauling cargo is kind of like the uh, the unsung heroes, right? I, I could tell you now, if I were to be a, uh, a, a heavy jet pilot, uh, real life, I would want to do cargo because then you wouldn't have to deal with the people. I think a lot of people will um, say that's probably the best way to go. All right, we'll get up here. We'll hook this uh, left. We're not going to call crossing the runway. Like I said, we don't have to worry about anyone right now. And, you know, there's a big debate on VATSIM about people not using Unicom and all that stuff. I, I kind of look at it this way. I always watch SimAware. If if there's really, like, if there's, uh, if there's no one around, like, if there was someone on the ramp or someone on final or something, yeah, I, I would call it out like crazy. I would call out every move I make. But we got the one guy coming in. He's at... Uh, We'll double check his altitude here in a second. He's moving in pretty close, actually. We'll refresh it. We'll see. Dude, what is he doing here? Yeah, he's still at 39,000 feet uh, southwest. 2662 737-700 Dallas to Pensacola. So he hasn't even started his descent. He's just north of uh, Gulfport, Mississippi right now, it looks like. It looks like he's kind of roughly in that area. Maybe Biloxi. So yeah, Unicom, I, I, yeah, I just, I don't go crazy with it. I know a lot of people say you should do it all the time on VATSIM and make every call, right? I just, you know, I'm sitting here watching Similware. I know there's not anything going on. Yeah, I just kind of feel like, uh, why clog up the frequency if they're, if you're not really like notifying anyone in the general area, you know? That's just, that's my thought. We'll call when we take the runway. We'll do, like, I always like to do the basic calls, right? The very basic bare minimum. But, um, you know, I won't tell what I'm taxiing on or, you know, my taxi route or anything like that. Like I said, if there was someone else moving on the uh, airport that you had to worry about, then, yeah, maybe so. But that windsock. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of a crosswind there. Actually, a lot of a crosswind. This is going to be pretty good, guys. All right, before we get down here, let's go ahead. Let's hop back in. Let's get uh, strobes going. We're going to try to do like a rolling takeoff here. That guy, get you, get you, get you. Let's go ahead and get our APU off. Nice, APU is off. Let's do uh, auto brake to max. Uh, spoilers are armed. Let's go Tara on the transponder. That's good. 
Pensacola traffic, UPS 1365, heavy taking Roadway 26 for departure, Pensacola traffic. All right, we'll hurry up and get out of here. Um, I guess we're good, right? I guess we're good. We got auto brake arms, spoilers arms, uh, flaps are down. It's 15-15. Uh, and let's raise our seat up just a little bit here so we can kind of see the taxi. So I think we're good. We'll hurry up and get out of here. Strobes are on. No messages other than uh, the doors and um, no. Why do they even put the no smoking light? It, I remember. I as far as old enough to remember flying back in the day when people used to smoke on airline flights. So I remember flying on Delta flights. It was like a uh, lounge up in there. Like there'd be so much cigarette smoke and stuff. It's crazy. Flying on uh, like Elton 11s between uh, uh, Atlanta and uh, DFW. It was great. It was gr It was a completely, completely different time back then, man. I'm telling you, dude. It was so much different back then. It was so different. All right, so we're lined up. Let's hold the race. Run the power up. Engine seem to be good and stable. All right, let's go ahead and hit Doga. Get some of that sweet, sweet uh, audio there. Turn down a little bit here. I don't have my headphones on today. I may regret that. Ooh, yeah, a little bit of a crosswind here. That is, man, that's stout. That's stout, right? That's stout. All right. Rotate. All right, we're off. Pause the rate, gear up. Nice, nice. What a fun airplane. It really just is. It flies so good. I just, I can't brag on it enough, guys. I really just can't. Let's go ahead and get uh, flaps up. Keep climbing out. Let's uh, do autopilot. Nice, let's go ahead and roll our altitude to, uh, we'll do like 12,000. All right, so we got to think here, uh, where is this uh, Southwest guy at here? He's at 29,000 feet. Let's do uh, direct through inbred. I really think that's inboard, but I just, I, <laughs> I like called it inbred for some reason. It's like, it's, it's an odd, uh, it's a, uh, it, it's an odd fix, right? It could go either way. I'm, I'm sure it's inboard, but uh, we'll see. All right, let's go ahead and get uh, slats up the rest of the way. We gotta watch this. Uh, we gotta watch this southwest guy here a little bit. I think that's southwest right there. Maybe let's refresh this because it la like it's such a delay. I wish it was uh, more real time. That was either southwest. That could have been uh, the uh, Aruba Airlines going to Houston. One of the two. All right, we're through 8,000 feet. Let's go ahead and do our uh, after takeoff. Let's get you, get you. Flaps are up. Ecast is good. Altimeters are set. That's all looking good. Okay, sweet. It's cold traffic, UPS 1365. Heavies through 10,000 feet, departing to the uh, east. Correct, uh, inboard. All right, through 10,000 feet. We're going to keep the landing lights on because of uh, uh, Southwest out here. All right, I think we're good with all that. He should be 
I think that's a Ruber right there. I, that has to be a Ruber, right? I don't see Southwest. He is through, he's at 25,000 feet now. I'm looking for him. I don't see him. He's got to be over here somewhere. That, that might be him right there. I can't tell. Man, that's a really, that's a really wonky contrail. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that, but man, he's like zigging and zagging over there. He's flying right under Aruba. Let's see, what is our heading? Our heading is, uh, about zero four five through thirteen thousand. Let's go ahead and go in profile mode here. He's still at twenty five. Man, it's kind of yeah. It's kind of uh, <laughs> it's kind of uh, freaking me out a little bit here. It's kind of freaking me out a little bit. Let's let's bug our heading here, and you know what? I, I kind of want to go. Oh man, I kind of want to go zero nine zero. I'm I'm looking for the traffic. I I don't see him though. I don't know what in the blue hell that's all about right there. Like it looks like an SA two or something. Like <laughs> surface air missile. Where's he at? Where is he at? We'll see him on TCAS. What is he through? He's through 22. He's kind of back behind us now. He's through 22. We're through 14. Actually, we're higher than that. It's a little bit off, right? Hopefully he has us inside, all right? I hope he does. I hope he has traffic because there's zero ATC down here. Let's refresh again just to make sure. Okay, he's turning. All right, I think we're good. I think we're good. He's turned to the south. We're heading to the northeast, so I think we're good on that. Nice. I don't see him at all. Traffic's not inside, right? Yeah, no traffic in sight. He's back behind us. I don't think he's setting up for 2-6. I don't know what kind of approach he's making, but he's like... Yeah, I don't know on that one, guys. I don't know. Um, okay, so uh, we're about to hit 19,000. We're through almost 17,000 feet. Uh, we're going to level out at 19. We just uh, made our turn at uh, inbred. It's inboard. It's, it's inboard, guys. <laughs> it's inboard. Anyway... Uh, we're going to do the RNAV approach into Albany. Let's find it. KBY. Let's do RNAV 2-3. Let's do it from PZD. I think that's uh, Pecan, right? I, th I think that's that VOR. That VOR. Let's do 230 knots at PZD. Nice, okay, 230. Okay, yeah, we're clear, all right. Yeah, man, that was a huge update. Like, he's almost landing already. That's crazy. Like, I thought we would have been out of their way ahead of him, but we're actually not. Jevmo, we're going to do 210. Okay, I, I think that should be good for now. Let's uh, zoom this out. Let's see what our top of descent looks like. Yeah, we still, we got a good ways to uh, top of the descent. Uh, our MDA for the RNAV, 2-3. Come on. There we go. Yeah, pecan. All right, PZD is going to be pecan. 
Um, I don't know. Which one does an airliner fall under, guys? Uh, LPV or LNAV VNAV? I want to say LNAV VNAV. I'm not 100% certain on that, but I think it's that. So 611. 611 is our MDA. Let's go ahead and fill that in really fast. 611. And our wind is... 26011 gusting to 20 um how would you you wouldn't do 11 maybe half of that maybe add 5 so 15 152 v app that seems really fast but i i don't know how you calculate the gust i thought i saw somewhere where you um where you take the base and half it or something all right let's go standard pressure Two nine or nine or two. Go ahead and get our landing lights off since uh, Southwest is no longer a factor. Looks like I have no clue what he's doing over there, but he just did a loop de loop at seven thousand feet. Like I guess he was. Uh, I guess he was on his phone and you didn't realize he needed to descend. He's still, he descend. He's still at 17,000 feet and he's like right on top of the airport. So he did like a circle. He did a big circle over there. All right. Still, uh, no ATC to be a concern with. Let's look at our RNAV approach again. So we'll hit up PZD, then we'll go direct Jevma, and then Wavka, and then Unike, and then Gukdi, Gukdi, I guess. We'll be good to go. We'll uh, we'll level out at like um, 3,000 feet for Jevma. Let's see what our uh, FMS has us doing. Crossing Jebma at 2,000 feet, uh, PZD at uh, Pecan at uh, 230, uh, 889.70. I want to get our speed down a little bit lower. Six point six two. Yeah, I think Wavco. We need to be doing 170. We're going to plug that in. That's basically going to be our turn to final at Wavka. And then 152. Okay, that seems uh, that seems decent to me. I'm still not sure on the V app. I need to um, I need to research that. I really do. Like how do you do like gusting winds? How do you um, calculate your wind correction? Not too bad of a day. It's not a gorgeous day, right? But uh, it's it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice up above the clouds. Let's see what uh, our location is here on the map. Where are we flying over? Just south of. Uh, Lockhart, Alabama, and just north of uh, Defunyuk Springs, Florida. We cross Dared, we'll be over Geneva. You know what? I'll just pull this up real fast on Navigraph so you guys can see. There we go. Look at this sectional here. A lot of uh, special use airspace down here, guys. Like, it's crazy the amount of special use airspace they have. It really just is. There's tons. You got Eglin Air Force Base down here. You've got uh, Tyndall. You've got all the stuff going on in Pensacola. Uh, there's just like tons and tons of military activity down here. So, we'll fly over Dauphin on our approach into uh, Albany. The whole CTAF thing blows, like, it, it 
it confuses the hell out of <clears throat> the hell out of me because it says control tower is one two zero point two five. Aegis is uh, three three point zero five. Uh, one two two point nine five. I guess that CTAF. I I really don't know. I thought on some of the airports on the sectional it would tell you, but I yeah I I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that. So I I gotta read up on that some more. I really just do. All right, let's pull this back down. You guys get the picture right. You guys, you guys get the pictures over here. All right, there we go. Might right, clear up a little bit towards Albany. Not too bad. Looking very nice, right? Man, this it's the best hops you can make in this plane. I'm telling you now, guys. I'm telling you. If you're not flying cargo hops in the A300, you're missing out. You're missing out. I flew one. Uh, it was back the other week. We went from Louisville to uh, uh, Greenville, North Carolina to uh, Roanoke, Virginia. We flew like 10 minutes from Greenville to Roanoke at like 9,000 feet. It's like landing on an aircraft carrier. That thing is only like a 6,000 foot runway or a little bit more, but that's what they fly in real life. So we did it. All right, we just turned it dared. We just turned it dared. Yes, we did. All right. I, I don't know if I'm going to let it do profile for us or if, um, if I'm just going to tell it what to do. We could try profile. We could see. We could let it do the whole RNAV if we wanted to, honestly. Like, we've got everything plugged in that we need. We've got the MDA. Six hundred eleven feet. Yeah, we could. We could just let it do the whole thing if we wanted to and then take it at, you know, like a thousand above and then land it. So yeah, we're going to be doing a 300 ops for a while. I want to get back down to Mexico. I'd love to do that trip from Guadalajara to LAX, but that's like a three hour trip. We're going to need some time. That might be a live stream thing. Honestly, that might be a live stream thing. Either way, everything's looking good. I was looking for any other traffic around here. nothing that we have to worry about it looks like uh yeah southwest is on final for runway 26 in pensacola he had to make another circle. he's like drawing pictures right <laughs> he's drawing pictures and made two circles. and we're not very far out of albany still no uh atc for vat sim of course it's hit and miss you know i even try to fly like in the evening which is what i consider prime prime time for us vat sim and it's still even hit and miss in like you might you have a good chance i think between like six and eight and then like after eight you know it just i don't know i have a hard time catching it sometimes i get it sometimes i don't i right, zoom this bad boy in just a little bit further here All right, so we're uh, about 35 out of top of descent. Let's keep going with it for a bit. We just don't want it to slip up on us, right? Atlanta's got some ATC. They got uh, Atlanta approach a 80 zone line. Frontier flight out of uh, Atlanta to Tampa. We've got uh, Delta out of Atlanta to DFW. Man, that's a trip I flew a lot back in the day in my FS 98 days. I flew Atlanta to uh, DFW all the time. I flew an L-1011, the um, Mad Dog, and the 727. Back in the VOR days. Who remembers the VOR days? Radio navigation. It wasn't, <laughs> it was nothing like what it is now, right? It was all VOR. It's like, you would leave Atlanta. I'm trying to think, how did that, how did that flight plan go down? You leave Atlanta, it was on like the Wii 2 departure. You'd fly to the Wii 2 fix, which was a certain D, like a certain heading off the uh, Atlanta VOR to a certain DME, right? And then you would turn direct um, uh, Meridian. You go to the Meridian uh, VOR MEI, and then you go JN uh, uh, Jackson, and then I want to say you went to uh, the Alexandria. 
VOR AEX, and maybe that's where you picked up the Cedar Creek arrival into um, into DFW, but it was all radio navigation, right? It was no RNAV and all this other stuff you see now. We're about 20 out of top of descent. So uh, once again, RNAV into uh, runway 22. We've got everything programmed in. Uh, MDA is set. That's all good. Let's go ahead and we'll roll this down to our RNAV altitude. We'll do, I think, for now we'll do 2,000. We'll arm it here in a bit. Now, I guess we could go ahead and arm it now. Let's do... All right, there we go. So it's doing what I wanted it to do yesterday. It didn't quite do it right because I think I was way further up on the descent than I realized. Like, I thought I was about 20 out, but I guess we were on top of it. But uh, now that we pulled it, right, it says uh, uh, profile descent in blue. So that means as soon as it hits the top of descent here, it's going to start doing its thing and it's going to start descending. So that's pretty good. And it's slowing up to 300 knots. already so yeah the big thing gotta watch uh I, I feel pretty certain it's gonna hit the altitudes okay it's just the speeds are what you have to watch and the thing about this plane is like it hangs on to the speed like if it has a speed limit it'll hang on to the speed until like the last minute like five miles out and then it just like it dumps the speed so they kind of like i'm not used to that but it does okay Not bad. Lots of uh, farmland down here, right? You grow a lot of uh, peanuts and pecans and a lot of agricultural stuff here in South Georgia. It's basically where we're at now, South Georgia. Actually, eh, not quite. We're still in Alabama just a little bit here. We're fixing the crossover if we haven't already. Let's look at uh, Navigraph, see what they say. I just dis yeah, I was gonna say I dis okay, yeah, we just crossed the Chattahoochee, right? Way down way down yonder in the Chattahoochee. We went over Dauphin, now we're heading for uh, Blakely, Georgia. Unfortunately you can't see it. We're flying through the Moody 3 MOA, the the Moody MOA. I don't know how they would do these flights if the MOA is active. Like, would they have to uh, circumvent it, like go around, or could they give the, um, like, could the, they provide separation? Because IFR technically isn't supposed to fly in a, a active MOA, right? So I don't know how they would uh, coordinate that, maybe. All right, looks like we're starting our ascent now. Yes, we are. All right, we're heading down. Let's see, our... Arrival altimeter is going to be, let's double check the winds, 260, 11 gust into 20. That's pretty stout, right? That's pretty stout. So, uh, 2973 on the altimeter. Yeah, man, that's that's going to be a spicy landing. It's going to be a little spicy. Broken at uh, 2,500 feet, overcast through 600. Why is it so windy down there? Like, it, <laughs> I grew up in the south, so I don't, like, you, you, you would have some windy days, but... Two nine or seven three. Let's do that real fast. Two nine or seven trace. There you go. Two nine seven three. Well, she seems to be heading down. Okay, let's give a little bit of speed brake action here. He's bang on the profile. That's good. Let's go ahead and do the landing lights before I forget about it. We'll go ahead and get those on. Landing lights on. Uh, any other traffic? Anyone we need to worry about going into Albany? We've got uh, Frontier Flight is uh, to about our 11 o'clock at 31,000 feet. He's no factor. He's no factor, but he should be like... There he is right there in front of your flight. You can see you can barely make out his contrail there. <coughs> can barely make out his contrail. Okay. 
speeds come on down to 300 knots that's looking good we'll have to slow to 250 here in a minute speed limit it's uh 11 4. he just got us crossing uh pecan it's uh Light level 190, what in the heck? We're, I want to see how that plays out because that is not right at all. Yeah, that's not right at all. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I think it's going to fly us right on through it and ignore that. We'll have to see. So we're going to need some in-flight beverages. Getting parched. It says retard. I think we're okay. We're good. She's holding the speed pretty good. Like she's getting ready to slow down for the 250. Nice. All right. So far, so good, right? We're just going to kind of hang, you know, hold tight and let her do her thing. We never took our ignition off. Bad spur. Bad pilot spur. We may, um, we may honestly, like, going into this weather, we may put it on continuous. It doesn't show rain. I haven't seen anything about rain, so we technically shouldn't need it. This looks like it's just overcast and uh, really windy. All right, so she's leveling us out. See what she does now this is where i'm curious about the whole pecan uh constraint right i don't know i'm curious to see is she going to climb us or is she just going to ignore that looks like she's just descending right over through it gradually And now she's dive bombing us, right? <laughs> now she's dive bombing us. There's such a cool video on YouTube of a UPS A300 landing at O'Hare, right? And there was a certain uh, taxi exit that he wanted to hit off the runway so we could go directly to the um, to the cargo ramp, but he had to hit it at like. Uh, uh, 3,000 feet. I think he basically landed and stopped the airplane, or he didn't stop it, but he got it. He landed and slowed it down enough to where he can make that exit in 3,000 feet in Airbus. Now, granted, the plane, but it couldn't have been very heavy. There's no way it could. Like, yeah, I think a lot of people take for granted. They feel like these planes are probably like loaded to the gills all the time. I don't think they are. I've seen videos of them un unloading and unloading them especially at like outlying airports and they're not very full at all like this some of them only have a few pallets so i think what sim brief does is is kind of um I, I i don't know a little bit overkill maybe a little bit overkill so we're supposed to uh, cross pzd it's uh 230 knots it's, it's disregarding the altitude i don't know how that's happening but it is Albany traffic, UPS 1365, heavy inbound RNAV, runway 23 from uh, PZD VOR, Albany. All right, so far, so good. We got to get, yeah, we need some more speed brake action, though. She's wanting to pick up on us a little bit here. We could uh, we could go ahead and run the slats out a little bit early, right? Let's go continuous on that. I, we're not going to do anti-ice. I think we're fine on that. Continuous relight on. Seat belts on, no smoking on. Speed brakes extended. Uh, landing lights extended. We're good on all that. Yeah, so far so good. So yeah, we're just letting her do profile. Profile is pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. I remember back in the FS 98 days, I don't remember having any aircraft that had like VNAV or, or, or like none of that that I can remember off the top of my head. Like 
99% of the time that I remember doing was uh, a vertical speed mode. Like I said, you were navigating from uh, VOR to VOR. I think RNAV, RNAV didn't come up into uh, the early 2000s, right? Like, like four or five years later, maybe. Go ahead and get speed brakes back in just a tad here. Let's go ahead and get uh, slats one, slats 15. Looks like she's going to slow up to 210. Let's keep the speed brakes out. We're down in the zoop. Yeah, it's a little soupy here. It's a little soupy, guys. It definitely is a little soupy. Dark clouds, too, man. This is really, this is almost like uh, thunderstorm clouds, right? All right, there she goes. She's slowing up 210. Who was that in message? Who sent a message? Delta 587 on 122.8. Atlanta traffic descending via the Aussie arrival. All right. All right, let's go ahead and go flaps 15. He breaks back in a little bit. Alright, watching our speed, it, it's, uh, and we're off the profile a little bit too, actually. Looks like she's, yeah, she's catching up to it though. She's catching up. Let's go ahead, let's slow her up some more. We gotta get, um... Up to, uh, 170. There we go, looking nice. Uh, so we should break out at 2,500. Let's go ahead and take this down to, uh, I think it's 661, so we'll do 700 feet. All right, she's back on profile, looking good. On speed, 170 knots. Should be, uh, yeah, the clouds are lightened up some too. Nice, and we're just now breaking out, so that's good. We still got the 20 knot wind, right? 11 gusting to 20 from uh, 260. So it's gonna be coming out of like, uh, what, one o'clock? All right, nice, there you go. She's descending on down. All right, let's go ahead and get uh, flaps 20. Looks like she's wanting to uh, slow up to uh, final approach speed. All right, let's just hang out right here for a bit. All right, looking for the field. I do not see it. I do not see it. We broke out at 3,000 feet, 3,100 feet, maybe 32, 33, something like that. It's interesting that she's slowing us on down to um, Let's go full flaps and let's go gear. She did that a little earlier than what I was really wanting to. Yeah, she she uh, she did that a little a little bit earlier than what I was wanting to, but it's fine. That is that's a really fast approach speed, man. It's not a long runway either. All right, we're going to do auto brake medium. Spoilers are armed. VAP 151. 
Yeah, yeah. This is a short runway, guys. This is a really short runway. Like we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to get on it. What is our runway for this uh, field here? Sixty six oh one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Field in sight. There we go. We're going to hang on to the uh, autopilot for a bit since uh, the wind is so gusty, right? Got a little bit slow. I really, I really think we could do better than 151. Oh, she's really slowing up. Why? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is she doing that? Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. You know what? I'm just going to take the throttle, my throttle, my plane. We're going to take it all. I don't know what that was about. I don't know what that was about. Like, she got really, really slow on us. You know what? We'll just take it. Now we got to dive bomber a little bit here. Yeah, that was weird. Why did she slow up like that? She, sh she shouldn't have done that. She shouldn't have done that at all. We weren't even nowhere near our MDA. A little more power in. Yeah, I did. Going with uh, manual throttle is a little different for me. Like, I don't do it a whole heck of a lot, right? Like, usually I just let the autopilot do it. So she's coming in a little slower, but she seems okay. He seems okay so far. All right, there we go. Red and white. Bring her up a little bit here. A little more power in. It's such a short runway. I'm, I'm worried about that VAT being like a 151 or 152 or whatever it was. Oof, a little bit of a crosswind there, guys. I felt it shift. It's like it shifted on us or something. This is not going to be a pretty landing. I can tell you now. This is going to be one of those deals where we just plan it, right? Like, <laughs> we've only got 6,600 feet. This is the USS Albany, right? <laughs> we've got to land. It's like landing on an aircraft carrier. Yeah, a little bit of uh, a little bit of a crosswind here. You see, our speed's kind of like all over the place, right? Oof. And yeah. What? All right, let's give it a try. Come on. Nice, nice, nice. All right, sweet. That wasn't bad. I'll take that. I'll take it all day, every day. I'll take that all day, every day, guys. We're 80 knots. Let's go ahead and get off the uh, auto brakes. There we go. Sweet, 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 sweet. I, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that, honestly. Like, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. All right, this is uh, another runway here. I guess we could, yeah, I don't want to take the runway. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. Nice. That wasn't bad, right? Like that's okay. That was definitely uh, a bit. We had a uh, we had a spot of crosswind. Just a bit. All right, flaps up, slats in. We'll get over here. We'll uh, we'll get cleaned up, and then we'll be good to go. Yeah, that that was a pretty uh, that was a pretty decent crosswind. A pretty decent crosswind. That is for sure. Fun though. Fun airplane. Really just is, guys. Highly, highly recommend this airplane. All right, let's see. Um, speed brakes, uh, flaps are up. Let's go to uh, transponder and let's do landing lights off. 
There you go, taxi own. Turn all. We'll leave strobe zone for now. Let's go ahead and get the APU fired up. Let's do that and let's go over here and see where our parking is going to be. I think I kind of know where it's going to be at, but not 100% certain. What is that? Brake fans are on. Yeah, the brakes a little hot. They're a little hot, right? We did a uh, we did a medium. I can't believe those guys landed in 3,000 feet. Like I said, it had to be a light airplane, but 3,000. And the brakes are smoking. Cargo ramps all the way. Okay, so uh, we make a left and go down to Alpha to a uh, hotel. Okay. I'm good. Spurs good now. So as we get over this last runway, we'll uh, oh, we'll kill the um, we'll kill the strobes. Nice, that was a fun trip. Another good one. Like how many times you get to fly a heavy Airbus or any heavy aircraft for like uh, 30 minutes, right? Like if you were to do this in the past, I mean, there's some short hop there's some short hauls in like heavy aircraft for passengers but generally they're all longer flights right like there's not a lot of like short legs you can find them a short leg i can think of in a 737 would be like um atlanta to birmingham i think they use a 737 on that uh maybe uh atlanta to um um spartanburg greenville spartanburg might be another short hop so there are there's some out there but those aren't heavy aircraft right like you know and you get tons of short hops in uh regional jets you know like i need to get back in a regional jet we haven't been in a crj in forever all right let's kill the strobes off our brake temps look like yeah brakes are a little hot they a little hot. They they a little smoky. We'll get up here. We'll call it a day, guys. If we got anyone else around here, no, that's just us. Frontier flights all the way down in the Florida Panhandle now. And that's it. There's no one else around. And it just went blank. That's weird. The map just went blank. There we go. Now it's back. All right. Let's hook this right. Let's go ahead and get uh, APU bleed going. Blow up a little bit. Blow 10 knots so we make this turn. Look at there, they standing out there waiting on us, they milling about. I want to get GSX so I can see the person dance. Yeah, I totally, I totally want to do that. I want to see the person dance. They got some pretty sweet moves. I think what we're going to do is just kind of make a circle over here. Nah, let's not do that. Let's just pull in. It don't matter. It's not like I'm going anywhere else. Is, is he trying to marshal us? I guess he is, right? No, I'm not going over there, dude. Nah, nah, I'm good. <laughs> we can't park right there, dude. What is your problem? He's like, where are you, where are you guys going? I'm going to just go right here. This is fine. Alright, hit brakes. Uh, hit the parking brakes. Let's hop back in. Let's do. Uh, our APU is up and running. Let's kill the engines. Transponder off. Engine two. Engine one. Let those spool down. Everything else looks good. Let N2 get below uh, 15, and then we can uh, chalk the wheels. There you go. That's good. Let's do uh, chocks, left stairs, ground power units, disarm all doors, door one, and uh, the main cargo door. Let's get this one here, and let's do 
ground power. You can kill the beacon. Seatbelt signs. We got our taxi lights. We just blind we blinded our poor dudes on the ground. They're gonna love that, right? Uh, everything else seems to be good to go. Let's kill the APU bleed and let's get rid of the APU. All right, guys, that's it. Another uh, another wonderful flight in the A300. Once again, a really short hop uh, between two kind of outlier airports. I think a lot of people in VAT sim like or or flight simulation like they focus on the big airports, right? Like the flying between. Uh, DFW in Atlanta, JFK and O'Hare, you know, LAX in uh, San Francisco. You miss out taking these big aircraft in these smaller uh, airports. I remember a few, uh, like last week or the week before I was flying this trip, except I flew the uh, trip from uh, Louisville uh, direct to Albany, right? And there was Atlanta center own and he was like, you're going to Albany? And I said, yeah, we're going to Albany. This is a regular scheduled real life flight. And he goes, I have never, in all the time that I've been controlling on VATSIM, I have never seen anyone go to Albany. So he's like, kudos to you. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to hit that like, smash that subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you in the air next time. Love all you guys. Peace. No, big cat. No. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. Kick. Oh, that's, uh, that's a MIG. That's a MIG over his head. Okay. <laughs> it's the weirdest day ever. Oh, no. He just fell. He just fell.